truffle. Two big chocolate-coated bars of truffle and roasted hazelnuts. Fried truffle. It's lovely. This is TVS. In ten minutes, whoops, apocalypse. Now it's 9.35 and time for the national and international news from ITN. IRA kill Ulster policeman as he leaves church. 26 die on El Salvador's election day. Two National Gallery masterpieces slashed. And why they are said no to Little Legs. Good evening. A senior Ulster policeman was shot dead today in front of his children as he left church. Inspector Norman Duddy, who was 45, is the first full-time RUC man to be murdered this year. The IRA have said they did it. He had just left a Presbyterian church in Londonderry where he was a member of the choir. He was with his two teenage sons. As they prepared to drive home, two men rode up on a motorcycle and fired through the car window at point-blank range. His sons were unhurt. Inspector Duddy was killed instantly. The shooting happened only 200 yards from Londonderry's main police station where the inspector worked. In El Salvador, the controversial general election has gone ahead despite heavy fighting in which 26 people have been killed today. Left-wing guerrillas attack polling booths across the country in attempts to disrupt, disrupt voting. Political groups on the left are boycotting the election because they say their candidates would be attacked by the right. But America's ambassador in El Salvador has called today's poll a major success. He says it'll end the civil war. Guerrilla forces have launched their biggest attack in over a year to coincide with the election, and some of the heaviest fighting was in the centre of the capital, San Salvador. It started at dawn, guerrillas challenging the army in a middle-class suburb in the north of the city. The troops at first uncertain where the rebels were. The guerrilla tactic apparently to try to prevent voting from starting here. Suddenly, an armoured personnel carrier moved in. It was to prove to be the guerrillas' undoing. Holed up in the adjoining shanty town, they were cornered by the advancing troops. A blazing exchange for 15 minutes, running, and then the end. Guerrilla dead, strewn across the shanty street. Troops checking the corpses for ammunition and valuables. Still more shots as the soldiers... John Cleese will be appearing on Radio 2 on Thursday evening in Star Sound Extra, in which he'll be talking about his latest film role, for which he's received rave notices as Major Giles Flack in Privates on Parade. And that's on Radio 2, Thursday evening at 9.30. While his erstwhile colleague, Michael Palin, returns to your screens tomorrow night to talk about some of the strange things he gets up to in his latest film, The Missionary. And that's Sunday night, 5 past 11, here on BBC One. And now look at the weather forecast. Tomorrow the southwest will be rather cloudy with rain or snow in places, but elsewhere it'll be fairly bright with some sunny intervals. Most other parts of the country will be dry again, except for some wintry showers near eastern coasts. It'll be a cold day, and after widespread frost overnight, temperatures will reach only 3 degrees centigrade to 5 degrees centigrade generally. That's 37 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the weather forecast for tomorrow. Well, the time now is exactly 16 minutes past midnight, and with a reminder that Radio 2 remains on the air throughout the night for your entertainment, may we on BBC One now wish you a peaceful night and a good day tomorrow. Good night.
thanks to Auburn and my thanks to Pam Ayres and to Richard Benjamin. To you for joining us and I hope you'll make it a date round about the same time next Saturday on BBC One. Till then, bye-bye. Sunday on BBC One, and at 7.15, there's a staggering start to the evening with Last of the Summer Wine. Drunk, only from the waist down. <laughs> oh, dare you say that, drunk! Steady, steady. No, oh, he's had too many too fast, that's his trouble. Uh, well, if they had been buying them, that would have slowed him up a bit. <laughs> at 7.45, Nanny, Barbara's trip to her father, has an unexpected ending. I... just arrived. Yes. Hoping to stay here? Well, yes. At 8.40, Mastermind from Roehampton. With questions on Emil Zola, Edward Elgar, Tipu Sultan and the cathedrals of England. At 10 past nine, Bergerac. So you're worried about Remy Chauvin, are you? Yes. You didn't tell me that life had been threatened. Such threats do what worry you. Four programmes for your entertainment this Sunday night on BBC One. A new series of Film International is starting shortly on BBC Two with one from France, Une semaine de vacances, a week's holiday. Here on BBC One we have our Saturday late film. It's British and somehow speaks for itself. Freewheeling action for Christmas on BBC One in Convoy. By the time we got into Tulsa Town, we had 85 trucks in all. But there's a roadblock up on the clover leaf, and them bears is wall to wall. Yeah, them smokies as thick as bugs on a bumper. They even had a bear in the air. I says, calling all trucks, this here is the duck. We about to go a hunting bear. Chris Christopherson and Ali McGraw lead the convoy this Christmas on BBC One. Now on BBC One, the news headlines from John Humphreys. The Kremlin's latest offer to limit the nuclear missile race has been dismissed by the West. The United States, Britain and France all say it's unacceptable. The offer came in a speech by the Soviet leader, Mr Andropov. He says the Russians would cut the number of missiles they got aimed at Western Europe in exchange for concessions by NATO. He also warned that if America goes ahead with new missiles like the MX, the Russians will do the same. Labour Party leaders have lost their high court action aimed at stopping parliamentary seat boundaries being changed. They say they'll appeal. If the changes go ahead, they could cost Labour 30 seats at the next election. A row is developing at Westminster over a company takeover. It involved a South African bid for a Scottish firm, Anderson Strathclyde. The, monop the Monopolies Commission wanted to block it, but the government overruled them. The Trade Secretary, Lord Cofield, has shares in the South African firm, though he did declare his interest and let his deputy handle the affair. Arthur Scargill has been cleared of speeding on the M1. The police claim he was driving at up to 120 miles an hour, but Mr Scargill, who denied it, questioned whether it was his car the police had followed. The magistrates at Rotherham in Yorkshire said the case wasn't proved and dismissed it. South African security police have been cleared of blame for the death of the white trade union leader Neil Agate. He was found hanged in a police cell last February, the first white South African to die in police custody. His friends and family say police torture drove him to kill himself. 
but the inquest, which ended today, said no one was to blame. Siamese twins, both girls, have been born at a hospital in Oxford, but it seems unlikely that both will survive. They were born this afternoon joined at the chest. The mother, who comes from Northampton, is said to be well and comfortable. And that's all from me. Good night. Well, before the weatherman, a rundown of our programmes for tomorrow night on BBC One, starting at 6.50 with a modern version of Handel's Messiah, as Vicky Brown, Labby Sifri and Madeline Bell join forces in Young Messiah. Barry Took is joined by Faith Brown, Chris Kelly, Jan Leeming and Bill Owen in Top Secret at 7.30. And the regular weekly visit to Dallas is at 8. Barry Took returns with Points of View at 8.50 and after the 9 o'clock news at 9.25, Gilbert and Sullivan continue posthumously to enjoy their remarkable revival in popularity with the production of The Pirates of Penzance, with Keith Michel heading the cast as that modern major general. Mike Harding entertains at 11 and finally at 11.35, the everlasting Sergeant Bilko, Phil Silvers. That's tomorrow night on BBC One. Now... The weather prospects from Michael Fish. Good evening to you. There's, there's a decided chill in the air and incidentally for the next day or two now that we find these cold northerly winds beginning to filter right down across the country and they are being brought to us by that area of low pressure. It's still a pretty deep one and that's the one of course that caused all that trouble yesterday and part of the day before. It's still, as you notice, not moved all that far away but it is filling nicely now and it will continue on its travels and eventually actually in a day or so these northerly winds will move away we'll then have a, a short spell of quieter weather as that ridge comes across but then following hard on the heels of that ridge are yet more frontal systems and they in a couple of days time will bring some rain in from the west they'll bring a change to milder weather that's of course of interest with Christmas approaching but as that process takes place we might actually get some snow that snow though I think eventually turning to rain still that's a long way off let's look at the picture for midday tomorrow because really it's very similar to the one I've just been standing in front of in other words still quite cold north to northwesterly winds blowing down across the whole of the country although a hint there of the first of uh, the warm fronts that'll be on the way to change the weather in a day or two's time so as far as tonight's concerned well certainly a very cold night over the whole of the country with a wide spread frost so do watch out for those slippery patches on the roads not very many showers getting through to the more central and eastern areas much of that part of the country dry but in these more uh, western coastal areas and certainly over a good part of the central and northern area of scotland there'll be a fair number of sleet and snow showers and some of them on the heavy side and that snow drifting especially there on the hills because it is still pretty windy a similar picture is a matter of fact tomorrow and that means to say most of the more sheltered central and eastern areas will have a dry day with a good deal of sunshine, although perhaps just here and there the odd uh, sleet or snow shower. But around these uh, western coasts, especially the ones facing north, and in the northern half of Scotland more especially, there'll be a fair number of sleet and snow showers, and once again some of them on the heavy side, and giving a fair bit of snow, especially on the hills where once again it'll be drifting. That's it. A very good night to you. Last Christmas, I hung the little angels on the Christmas tree and Stephen helped me. And then, Mum and Dad went out to a party and Stephen and I were in bed. And then I woke up and there was smoke and Stephen was crying. And I ran and shouted for Mum, but she didn't come. And then Stephen stopped crying. That was last Christmas. Fire can break out at any time. This Christmas, don't leave your children alone in the house. That was a public information film. Well, now the time is two and a half minutes before midnight. But before we leave you for the night, let me tell you that tomorrow evening, Radio 3 will be broadcasting a complete performance of Handel's Messiah, given a couple of nights ago at the Barbican in the City of London. It begins at 7.45, and it's in stereo on Radio 3. Now, it only remains for me, Peter Bolgar, on behalf of all of us on BBC One, to wish you a very good night.
Sheldon went that way. and a hearty Christmas. Merry Christmas. A very happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. A very happy Christmas. And to all of you born on Christmas Day, happy birthday. And, and a, a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you, too. Whatever you do, don't have duck for Christmas. <laughs> happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy. Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Very Merry Christmas indeed. Happy Christmas. Happy blank. And a very Merry Christmas from me. BBC Two, in about five minutes, concludes the series on Kingswood, a comprehensive school, with a group of viewers in discussion with those who were responsible for the series, an end-of-term report. On BBC One, an exciting way to end our evening with the sequel to The French Connection, Gene Hackman once more sets out to track down his old adversary in French Connection 2. ...was acquitted, however, of assaulting a 15-year-old schoolgirl. Mrs Joyce Rossiter, who was accused of controlling prostitutes, was jailed for two years. The Department of Trade says it's thinking of salvaging the dangerous chemicals still on board the Greek freighter Aeolian Sky which sank in November off the Isle of Wight. Hundreds of containers from the ship have been washed ashore on beaches around the Isle of Wight and Dorset. ...however, of assaulting a 15-year-old schoolgirl. Mrs Joyce Rossiter, who was accused of controlling prostitutes, was jailed for two years. The Department of Trade says it's thinking of salvaging the dangerous chemicals still on board the Greek freighter Aeolian Sky which sank in November off the Isle of Wight. Hundreds of containers from the ship have been washed ashore on beaches around the Isle of Wight and Dorset. Next week, BBC One continues full coverage of the Winter Olympics. Radio Times has all the details and a double-page spread with the highlights of the non-sporting week. Drama. Films. Light entertainment and some new programs in open secret an american woman tells of the grave decision she made for her job it bothers me that i can't have kids because i'd like to i miss having i guess a little one around the controversialists trevor beeson talks to eric heffer mp i don't believe in the uh, uh, communist uh, philosophy that exists in the soviet union or eastern europe I believe in a genuine democratic socialist society. All BBC television and radio programmes for next week are featured in the new Radio Times. Now, Gene Hackman stars in tonight's feature film, The French Connection No. 2. Programs for Thursday evening on BBC One. In Tomorrow's World at 7.40, Michael Rod discovers how the silicon chip has reorganised music making. At five past eight, Wildlife on One takes a St Valentine's Day look at the intricacies of courtship for the amorous amphibians. At 8.30, instant food brings instant trouble to watch this space. All you do is add boiling water and it'll swell up to four times its size. You must have had a very hot shower this morning, Brian. <laughs> Port rise. At 9.25, the play for today is No Defence. The balance in a rape trial hangs on the impartiality of the judge. But is the young woman as innocent as she appears? And why did the accused jump bail? I thought he might really kill me. So I told him to get it over with. Did you threaten her at all? No, sir. She wanted to make love. Mrs Armstrong... Did you come here to this court after five years to tell lies? No. 
I did not. In Platform 1 at 10.45, David Steele gives his views on the country's need for a strong party of the center. And at 11.15, Yehud Emanuel performs a new work for the 1980 Winter Olympics. Programs tomorrow night on BBC One. Michael Parkinson's guests on Saturday night will be Joan Collins, Leslie Thomas and John Pertwee. That's Parkinson on Saturday at 11.15. Now the news headlines from Peter Woods. In Yugoslavia, the doctors looking after President Tito say his general health has been getting worse all day. The latest bulletin from the hospital said his kidneys and heart were getting weaker and intensive treatment was now being administered. The 87-year-old leader had his leg amputated last month. The speculation in America that President Carter is about to make a statement on the hostages in Iran it's thought he'll reply to a new plan by Iran's president for the release of the hostages, including America's admission of guilt in helping the Shah and agreement to let the Iranians pursue the Shah for his alleged crimes. Ayatollah Khomeini is said to have approved the plan. The Winter Olympic Games have got underway at Lake Placid. They were formally opened by the American Vice President Walter Mondale. Shortly before, the International Olympic Committee said the Summer Games in Moscow should also go ahead as planned. In Northern Ireland, a bomb has badly damaged a bar in Newry, County Down. The bar was cleared before the bomb went off and no one was hurt. In the Commons tonight, the government faced its biggest rebellion by Tories since coming to power. The government's majority fell to 23 during voting on the Education Bill. Many Conservative MPs either abstained or voted against the bill, which gives local authorities discretion to charge for school buses. The opponents argued that those living in rural areas and large families would suffer. There's still no end to the steel strike in sight. Representatives of the two main unions spent an hour at the offices of the Arbitration Service ACAS today, but left without any hope of negotiations being resumed. Steel workers at the private firm of Hadfields in Sheffield are angry and confused about a union order to rejoin the national strike. This evening, both of Hadfields' plants were working normally. Meanwhile, the government have agreed on further steps to strengthen the employment bill, now going through Parliament. They've drawn up a consultation document, which will be published next week. And that's the news. Well, the late news for the South follows the weather outlook now from Jim Bacon. Good evening. Well, after the last few days, the patterns on this chart will probably look very familiar to you. A depression to the west, a set of fronts approaching the western side of the country, and the isobars showing southwesterly winds, as those arrows there indicate. So that's kept us mild. This set of fronts will bring rain across western parts uh, during tonight, and then tomorrow across most remaining parts of the country, and then further out to the west on the other side of the Atlantic, there's yet another depression ready to do exactly the same as that follows suit pushing its fronts towards us as we come through to the weekend. But let's have a look at tonight's weather in a bit more detail. For most of us, it's going to be a dry and rather misty night in places, particularly in these western areas near the western coast. There are some breaks in the cloud down these more eastern parts of England and Scotland, and their temperatures falling just enough to give you a touch of ground frost in one or two places. But most of us, a dry night, a fairly mild night too. But up in the northwest, that rain from those fronts will be reaching northwestern parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland before the night is out. And if we look at the forecast chart for noon tomorrow, you can see there the set of fronts having moved across most western parts. The warm front probably a fairly weak feature, but the cold front bringing a fair amount of rain with it to northwestern areas, particularly with that little kink on the front over Northern Ireland on that chart. That will prolong the rain for a time and give you some heavier periods of rain as it passes by. And if we look at the chart for tomorrow, well, that rain reaching most of these western areas by the start of the day, and the cloud all the time thickening up from the west as the rain follows suit and crosses over to the eastern side of Scotland and other northern parts of England. At the same time, brighter and drier weather will reach Northern Ireland, probably sometime during the afternoon as the rain belt continues to move east. The eastern side starting fairly bright with perhaps a little bit of sunshine in places, but the rain all the time trying to work its way a little bit further southeastwards, although it'll be quite late in the evening before it reaches the extreme southeast of England. And as I said, a mild day in the outlook, continuing mild, but rather changeable with further rain, but some sunshine too. And now, finally, on BBC One in the South, the late night news. Good evening. The government tonight agreed to a four-point programme to deal with contamination along the south coast by poison canisters from the sunken Greek freighter Aeolian Sky. The move came at a meeting between three south coast MPs and Mr Marcus Fox, the junior environment minister. 
Mr Fox is to make a ministerial visit to Dorset, Hampshire, the Isle of Wight and Sussex next week. The Ministry of Defence are to investigate the possibility of providing equipment to detect the floating canisters containing arsenic tetrachloride. I'm sorry, arsenic trichloride. And the Ministry will also have talks with local councils to see if military help can be used to deal if the problem uh, or the situation gets worse. The pilot of a light aircraft has been killed in a crash near the Goodwood Racecourse in Sussex. He was Mr James Ireland, a 48-year-old landscape gardener who lived at Selsey. The plane was found crashed in a field near Trundle Hill. 300 clerical workers at the British Aerospace Factory at Hamble have voted for an all-out strike in support of their pay claim. They want a 20% rise and they say they won't agree to talks until the management improves on an offer of 13%. The factory makes components for a number of important modern aircraft, including both versions of the Harrier jump jet and the European Airbus. The Portsmouth coroner has warned people who use Ascot water heaters to have them serviced at least once a year. The warning came at an inquest on an 89-year-old woman who died accidentally from the fumes of an unserviced heater. The Gosport MP, Mr Peter Vigors, has asked the government to help stop the spread of nuclear weapons. He said in the Commons today that Pakistan should be encouraged to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in view of what he called the unique opportunity of the Russian intervention in Afghanistan. British Gas are resuming their search for oil in the channel off the Dorset coast. They say they've been encouraged by what they found when the Divi Beta drilled an exploratory well 25 miles southwest of the Isle of Wight last year. The new well is expected to be closer to the Dorset coast. Brighton's biggest tourist attraction, the Athena B, has been sold for £25,000 to Medway Secondary Metals in Raynham Creek, Kent. The writ placed on Athena B by Brighton Council means that she needs to be put in dry dock in a safe condition as soon as possible. The scrap value of Athena B is estimated at £30,000 and it's hoped to float her off Brighton Beach on Sunday, then tow her round the coast of Kent and into the Medway. Domestic ratepayers in the New Forest face a rate rise of 30%. This would mean an increase of 87 pence per week for the average ratepayer. The council at Basingstoke is asking private developers to come up with ideas to stop the town hall from becoming a ruin. The 140-year-old building is empty, and many councillors believe it will make more economic sense if a private company takes over the building. Sailors and Marines from the Portsmouth-based carrier HMS Hermes are to lead the Mardi Gras parade through the American city of New Orleans tomorrow. Fifty members of the crew, led by a Royal Marines band, will head the colourful procession through the streets. Well, now let's uh, take a look at the weather forecast for us here in the south. It'll be a rather dull and misty day at first tomorrow, but a few breaks in the cloud are likely and it'll probably remain dry throughout the day. Towards the evening, occasional rain may reach western areas and the maximum temperatures will be near 10 degrees centigrade and the wind a light to moderate southwesterly. So there we are, that's the uh, news and forecast bringing us to the end, as usual, of our programmes here on BBC One in the South. Now, since we're a little bit earlier than usual this evening, uh, may I suggest that you tune in to Radio 2, where Brian Matthews is providing an excellent programme around midnight and uh, that's followed at uh, two minutes past two. Uh, by You and the Night and the Music, presented by Richard Clegg. And that goes right through until 5 a.m. If you're not asleep by then, then you should be. Well, the uh, time now, let's uh, take a look at that clock. It's uh, just after 20 to 12. And as I say, it's time for us to leave you. So on behalf of all of us here at BBC One in the South, may I wish you, wherever you may be, a very peaceful night. Good night.
an hour before I put the howlers on you and disturb your peace, why don't you nip up and switch off your television sets? Don't forget to do so, will you? Good night again. Bronco presents Beautiful Sunday. Beautiful. Lena Martel's brand new album featuring 18 beautiful songs for Sunday for every day. A treasure of holiday music by our very own Lena Martel. A perfect Christmas gift for mums and dads. With best wishes for a beautiful Sunday from Lena Martel to you. my Christmas shopping, and I'm delighted. You've seen Ronco's classical go before. Well, now they've added a brilliant new collection of eight box sets. Four LPs in each box, a box set to suit every taste. Big band, country, jazz, Viennese waltzes, and more. Why not solve your Christmas gift problems as I did with the gold collection from Ronco, only £6.99. We're happy to announce the arrival of a new baby. We've called her simply New First Love because she's more natural than ever. First of all, feed her, then gently squeeze her and see little tears run down her cheeks. Then she wets her nappy, just like a real baby. New First Love feeds, cries little tears, and wets her nappy. New First Love, a very lovable new baby doll from Pedigree. Everyone, smile! Mother, big smile! Nice. Where's the photograph? Well, I'll have to take the film to be developed. What, no photograph? No photograph? No photograph. Here, dear, is the photograph. With a Polaroid 1000 instant camera, just push the button, and in minutes you'll enjoy your picture in brilliant colour. Now that's a photograph. Polaroid 1000, the world's simplest camera. Should be here in four minutes. Don't fuss, Mum. You know what I like. Blooming taters out here, Sarge. Put the kettle on. When you find yourself with a hungry moment, just put the kettle on and make a pot noodle. Tender pasta noodles with vegetables and soya pieces in a rich, savoury sauce. Choose from five tasty flavours and eat hot from the pot. Now mind your shirt, Gerald. So try pot noodle today. Now in new sweet and sour and cheese and tomato flavours. Well, I've got a little unexpected extra minute, which is very useful, actually, because it enables me just to take the clip off the announcer's friend and the viewer's Bible and turn the page of the TV Times and take a look ahead with you to tonight here in Anglia. Well, of course, after about Anglia at 6.35, we'll pay our usual visit to the Crossroads Motel. And then following that at 7 o'clock, Dick Joyce is back with another edition of Bygones. Now, in tonight's programme, Dick, as usual, will have a studio guest. And that studio guest is Farming Diaries' David Richardson. Nice fellow, I know him personally. And David will be bringing along his collection of pigs. I don't know quite what size they are, but my guess would be that 
the small variety. Anyway, you can see tonight in bygones at 7 o'clock. Well, then at half past 7, in fact, if you joined, oh, the about 12 or 15 million people who were watching last night, This Is Your Life, you'll have seen Janet Brown, that lovely lady impressionist. Well, she's back, of course, in her own show tonight at half past 7, doing lots of her usual lovely, funny stuff. And talking about funny things, at 8 o'clock tonight, those <laughs> great builders, and I've got a builder in at the moment, so I know what it's all about. The Cowboys will be here, so lots of fun and games with them. There's TVI at 8 30 and excitement with mind at nine but now here's your next program <laughs> amazing the fuss men make over this St. Bruno thing. I mean, all they ever talk about are the cooler, smoother, slower burning virtues of that mild St. Bruno. Yeah. Sometimes I think they're not really... something new to discover and enjoy Boots. It's Boots' special touch. That's something extra that makes Boots such a nice place to shop. Mmm, that feels good. Come and try the special touch of Boots. As far as my dogs are concerned, pedigree chum is their roast beef. They adore it. I've produced 21 English champions, and I'm proud of that fact, and I would only consider using pedigree chum. Pedigree Chum is firm and meaty. It's solid nourishment. Chum is food for champions. It's always, always good. Look, look at them. They love it. Good breeding deserves good feeding. And I recommend Pedigree Chum every time. Pedigree Chum. Top breeders recommend it because it's solid nourishment. Can love bridge the aid gap? This week, the son talks to couples with years between them. Miss Great Britain married an older man. How does it work out? If a man's magic, then nothing else matters. Don't miss Love Across the Years, only in the sun. Who are Parky's ten favourite ladies? Joan Collins' ten sexiest men. The sun's got the lists. Who's up and who's down? All kinds of fascinating lists in the sun. Even top stars have no secrets from their masseur. And this top masseur lets you in on them. Plus some of his own in the sun. And it's that great sun underwear sale with prices so low, it's dangerous. You can wake the beast in any man. Get this sheer overnight sensation. This saucy little bed suit and snap out this bikini suspender and garter set. The sun's the one that's got it all. Get it all and drive him wild. Pop into your paper shop and order the sun. One in the Waltons, I thought it was quite funny. John Boy in the Waltons, where he cocks up his lines. That unbelievable speech coming out of June. Sunday night at 7.15, we begin a new series of Hawaii Five-O. Ha, ha, ha. 
edition of Gear to the Peak. of your Westminster at 10.30, here's Brian Shellcross. Hello, we've been joined in the Your Westminster studio by a group of pensioners, all of whom have problems to air. Their questions will be answered. Betrothal of their beloved son, the Prince of Wales, to the Lady Diana Spencer, daughter of the Earl Spencer and the Honourable Mrs. Shand Kidd. So began a day of royal excitement, of congratulations and tributes to the couple in the Commons, in the Lords, at the gates of Buckingham Palace, and at the places where Prince Charles and Lady Diana are best known. They'll be married in late July, but exactly when and where has yet to be decided. After spending most of the day at Buckingham Palace, Lady Diana went tonight to Clarence House for a celebration dinner with the Queen Mother, her fiancé and her grandmother. Prince Charles arrived soon after Lady Diana after the briefest of drives along the Mall. Tonight's dinner at Clarence House is rather special, not just because this is engagement day, but because Lady Diana is able to dine with her fiancé at her home for the first time, because today she's moved into Clarence House. She'll live there during the next few months of hectic planning and preparation. The Prince never visited her at her London flat. Security and the constant attentions of photographers ruled that out. But now they're just a stone's throw away from each other. And it's fitting that Lady Diana should be staying with the Queen Mother. She was one of the few people in on the secret from the beginning. She's always been proud of the fact that she has been one of the two women in the life of her favourite grandchild, the other, of course, being the Queen. The Queen Mother will undoubtedly be delighted that there are now three. And as someone who trod a similar path as Lady Diana, she'll be willing and able to offer some advice about what the future holds. Lady Diana got her first official taste of that future in the public eye this afternoon. For months, the couple have been trying to avoid the photographers. The relationship between the two sides has sometimes shown a certain amount of strain. But that had all vanished when the Prince and his lady stepped out into the garden of Buckingham Palace and faced the cameras. It was strange, said the Prince, to be able to appear with a lady in public and not worry about the following day's headlines talking of marriage. They would, but this time, he joked, it was, thank heaven, true. Washing the living daylights out of your hair? Now, Elsair Frequence is a beauty shampoo and a mild shampoo. Clean hair. Beautiful hair. Wash beauty in. Not out. Elsair Shampoos. Wash beauty in. Not out. By L'Oreal. Because you're worth it. Royale. What 
Dacior orbicularis oris, Dacia avigus vein, Dacia articular cartilage, and those are your synovial membranes. Right, right. It's getting very cold. Right. My daddy liked it hotter. I am not your... Right. Ron Atkinson reckons he could the style and the class that Manchester United want. Well, I had the pleasure of telling him to his face exactly what I thought about him. Read about it in The Sun. Only in The Sun, the soccer scoop of the century. Harry Gregg blows the lid off Manchester United. I'll tell you about the scandal that rocked Old Trafford to its foundations. The rise and almost fall of Gary Bailey. How Martin Edwards took the chair that should have gone to Matt Busby. Plus bingo in The Sun. Half a million won and another half million waiting. £50,000 to be won this week. It's all in The Sun. Quick meals are only half as good, half as interesting, without yeoman mash. Yeoman mash with real potato. Big value, creamy, or three savoury varieties. Why do things by halves? Try yeoman mash. It makes a meal complete. <laughs>